All right, so everybody on the first page, all it says is Pre-Cal A Chapter 3 Review Sheet. And then there's a little thing that says if there's a circle, use calculator. So anything that's circled is going to be a calculator problem. Um, and that's okay. All right, we'll figure that out as we go. All right, so has everybody got a sheet of paper out so you can work along with me? We are not going to attempt to do these problems on the sheet. You have a piece of paper out and you're working along with me. Exponential function containing 0, 2, and negative 1, 3. All right? So it's the first thought that pops into your head. Exponential function. Exponential. Y equals A times B to the X. That's the first thing that pops into your head or should pop into your head. Right? All right. Now what? Plug in the point for y and x. You plug in the point um, that has the zero in it, right? Yes. Is Alex in the van? No. 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 All right. So we're plugging in. doing Miss White? Some people just never learn. Okay. All right, so I'm plugging in the point that's got a zero in it. So two equals a times b to the zero. So two equals a. We call that what? Our initial value. Now we have y equals 2b to the x. So we'll plug in the other point, which is negative 1, 3. Right? And then what? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. And it turns out B is two thirds. Does it make sense to you that if B to the negative first is three halves, regular B would be two thirds? Does that make sense to you? So if you want to go straight from here to there, that's fine. But don't forget to write your answer. Y equals two times two thirds to the X. Do not ever combine these two. Please, they are separate numbers. They never <coughs> get combined. That's the answer. All right? Now we want a logistic function with an initial value of 10, limit to growth 12, and passing through 2, 2. All right? Now tell me where I start with this. Well, first of all, I got to remember that my format is this, right? You simply have to memorize that. So you know that's the framework that you're operating within. Now, you need an A, a B, and a C. Which one are we going for first? Well, A is 10. We know A is 10. It, oh, no, 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 A is not 10. A is 12. The limit to growth is A. So we know right off the bat that A is 12. <coughs> Now, I have an initial value of 10. What does that mean? An initial value of 10. Mm -hmm. That means the point 0, 10. So I'm going to go with that one now. I'm going to put 10 here and 0 in for x. 
initial value is your y-intercept, 0, comma. All right, how do I solve that? D to the zeros is just 1, isn't it? So now multiply both sides and distribute. So 10 plus 10D equals 12. So 10D equals 2, and it looks like D equals 1 fifth. So Y equals 12 over 1 plus 1 fifth T to the X. I'm there now. I know A is 12 and B is 1 fifth. Mm -hmm. Now what? Plug in 2, 2. Plug in 2, 2. The, the last point that I haven't used yet. Remember, X is the exponent. Multiply and distribute. So we're going to have 2 plus 2 fifths t squared equals 12. Is that right? Uh, now we'll subtract 2. So 2 fifths t squared equals 10. Multiply each side by five halves, which is the same as dividing by two fifths. If you want to think about it as dividing by two fifths, it's the same as multiplying by five halves. So c squared equals what? 25. 25. Oh, nice. So c equals five. There's a lot of work there. Do not get so excited you forget to write the answer. The answer is. 12 over 1 plus 1 fifth times 5 to the x. And are you <coughs> tempted to multiply those? Probably tempted, but you're not going to do it. Right? Those are two separate numbers. And then numbers, or letter C, oh, this is a little different. But you know how to do this. This is easy. Write the equation of the new function. We start with this, log x. But you want to shift it four units left and three units up. You know how to do that. How do you shift it four units left? Put x plus four. Wouldn't that shift it four units to the left? Now I want to go three units up. And then plus three. Plus three on the end. There you go. That's all there is to it. You don't need to be plugging in points or doing anything wacko. That's it. Easy? Yeah. Easy. Now, two, I'm glad two is up there high on the list. Two is the kind that if we'd have had more time yesterday, we would have done some more practice on because it was on the practice test, which, oh, by the way, means it's on the test, right? But we hadn't really done any like it. It just kind of showed up. So here we got another one. So let's do this one. Here's the given. Log base x of 2 is 0.12, and log base x of 5 is 0.56. Okay, so that's the given. Now, using that, we're going to find the log base x of 100. Now, think about what we did yesterday. Do you have an idea? Yeah, split, it split it up. Chandler says you got to split it up because 100 is not one of the numbers that you were given. The only numbers you were given are 2 and 5. So you got to split this up. So what's 100? 100 could be written as what? 2 times 2 times 5 times 5? Yes. If I took it down to 2s and 5s? And I took it down to 2s and 5s because those were the numbers that I was given. Now, those are being multiplied, which means if I pull the problem apart, 
it will come apart not as a multiplication but as an addition so this will be the log of 2 plus the log of 2 plus the log of 5 plus the log of 5 because when you multiply numbers together you add their logarithms right now this number is 0 0.12 this is 0 0.12 and these two are 0.56s so I can type all that in my calculator. It doesn't say it's a calculator problem. I could do this without a calculator, but it is easier with one. Did you get 1.36? Is that right? Oh, let's try the next one. Same given, but this time it's the log base x of 25x squared. Now, what about 25? 5 times 5. So we're going to break it apart. And before you say, how do you know you have to break it apart? Stop. The only given numbers you have are 5 and 2. Right? you got to have it written in terms of 5s and 2s or we can't do the problem. Now, see all these times? What do they mean? Work. Additions. So it's going to be the log of 5 plus the log of 5 plus the log base x of x squared. Wait a minute. That's a property. What's the log base x of x squared? 2. So this is just 2. That cancels. It's just 2. And then these are 0.56s. So 3.12, if I added right, double check my arithmetic. I don't know that it's totally made up it's the given all right there's one more here we go it says the log evaluate the log base x of the fourth root of 2x now first of all radicals do not live peacefully in logarithm land so we're going to take that fourth root and do what with it change it to not to the fourth power to the one fourth power so this is the log base x of 2x to the one fourth power Alec is pointing because he knows when you take the logarithm of something to a power the power comes out front so this is one fourth the log base x of 2x? Right? Now, see that multiplication right there? We're going to pull that apart, and we're going to pull it apart as an addition, right? So we have the log base x of 2 plus the log base x of x. Now, this number is 0.12. They gave me that one. What's the log base x of x to the first? That's a property. That's 1. Nobody's ever going to tell you that. You are supposed to know that. So our answer is 0.28. So what is the key to doing those problems? They're pretty easy, but what's the key? Break down whatever it is they give you to find the log of, pull it apart, and when you pull it apart, you're always going to pull it apart as an addition or a subtraction, depending on whether these have been multiplied or divided. 
you'll always come apart and adding them or subtracting them, always. Okay? All right, number three, solve. Okay, these are logarithmic equations. And when I look at problem A, I am bothered because what? What's bothering me about this equation? There's two logarithms. If I'm going to solve an equation, a logarithmic equation, there cannot be two logarithms on one side. So I'm going to do the opposite of what I was just doing. Over here, I had to pull it apart. Now I got to put it together. It's a plus. So how are these going to go together? As a multiply. So it's going to be the log base 4 of 5x minus 10. Since their logarithms are added, I'm going to multiply those two things. So what? 16. Exactly. And how did you get 16? You said 4 to the second equals 5x minus 10. When we have one logarithm, the only way to get rid of it is to translate it into an exponent equation. So 4 to the second equals 5x minus 10. So my grade is this, 16 equals 5x minus 10, 26 equals 5x, and x equals 26. Yes. What? Yeah. I don't want you round, uh, rounding it off, but since that's no, a yeah, finite yeah. decimal, that's fine. Okay, B. Logarithmic equation, the log base 6 to 21 equals x. Now, notice that circle. That doesn't mean a calculator is allowed. That means a calculator is required. I could do this problem without a calculator if it were the log base 6 to 36. Would you agree with me? Why? 36 is 6 squared. So this would be the log base 6 to 6 squared, which is, of course, 2. 21 is not a power of 6. So I need a calculator. So what am I going to do? What? Well, yeah, but I can't put in base 6 on my calculator. So 6 to the x equals 21. Get rid of the bad logarithm. Base 6 is a bad logarithm because it's not on my calculator. Once I've gotten rid of the bad one, I'll put a good one in, L-O-G or L-N, either one. They're, they're good logarithms because they're on my calculator. What happens to the X now when I do that? It drops in front, so x to log 6 equals log 21. So x is the log of 21 over the log of 6, which now I can type in on my calculator. Log 21 divided by log 6. And I got about 1.699. I can round that off. Is that what you got? All right, everybody follow those steps. Now, C is not circled, but it looks so much the same. It looks like the same kind of problem. And in fact, I will do it the same way. So I'll start out by rewriting this. How? X to the third equals seven. Now, the reason that a calculator isn't necessary is because the exponent isn't the variable. If the exponent is the variable, I need the log in order to pull that off. But I don't need to do that here. How do I solve an x cubed equation? What do I need to do? Cube root it. So I'm going to cube root both sides. So what's the answer? x equals the cube root of 7. Done. Done. Move on. 
What do you mean simplify? Rewrite it as seven to the one third? Yeah. Absolutely, that isn't simplifying it, but you can rewrite it if you choose. It doesn't make any difference. I am not mixing. Some of you say, oh, but you said no radicals. I said no, ra no radicals of logarithm land. Is there a logarithm in this problem? No. So I'm gonna leave it cube root of seven. If you wanna write it seven to the one third, that's perfectly okay. They are exactly the same thing. It does not matter. Whatever flips your switch. All right, next equation. Ln x plus ln five equals two. Do not think for a moment that there is anything different about this problem. There isn't. Ln's are just like logs. They are logarithms. They function the same way. So I have two ln's on the same side of the equation. That bothers me. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put them together. And when I put them together, since that's an addition, they will go together as a multiplication. So ln 5x equals two. Sophie? You got an idea back there? No, I was just wondering how you build groups uh, where the LNs to the other side. You absolutely could. If I have a logarithm, when I have something like, um, you know, if I have ln x equals ln 5, let's just make it real simple, then clearly x equals 5. The problem here is you got that 2 in there. So there is no dropping logarithms. And now you'd have to combine these two. And that doesn't even have a logarithm on it. So it makes it harder to do. I get the idea. If that were a zero, I would absolutely do that. Absolutely. But since it's not, it's really easier to put them together over here. Great question. I saw your mind working and your hands flying around. Great question. Okay. I also was helping apparently one of your friends, I was observing a second year algebra class and I do not know her name, but I happened to be sitting by her and she was having trouble with her calculator. So I was helping her and then she was writing the answers on her iPad. And as she was writing her answers on her iPad, a message from you came up on the screen. So yeah, I thought, Ooh, I wonder what class Sophie is in right now. Um, I didn't say anything though, I remained calm. <laughs> All right, so I put these two together and they became a 5x, right? <laughs> now, I have one logarithm and I need to get rid of it. So I'm going to do exactly what I did here. Now, when you look at this, you say, but Mrs. Ford, there's no base. Yes, there is. What is the base? E. So I'm going to say E to the second equals 5x. So x equals, your job is solve for x. So x equals e to the second over five. Do I leave my answer that way? Yes. Just like when you find the area of a circle, you say something like 25 pi and you leave the pi, we leave the e. It's perfectly fine. Leave the e, that's your answer. All right, what was that? That was d, so now we're doing e. All right, so here we go with e. Three log base two of x plus one equals nine. All right, you got a couple ways to start with. Start this with, one is easy and one I think is harder. They will both work. What's your thought when you look at this problem? Divide by three, that's the easy way. Get that three out of there. Now, your other option, you gotta deal with the three. But your other option, <coughs> is to do what with it? Look where it is. It's in front of a logarithm. So what does it represent? A cube. This represents an exponent. My deal is, why would I want to mess with that when I can get rid of it? So I'm going to divide by three, just get rid of it. And I have this. Two to the third equals x plus one. So eight equals x plus one and x equals one more logarithmic equation to solve 
So what's your thought on this one? Oh, the Ellen's don't cancel yet. No, no, no. Kids will try to cancel them. And that's when I get my pen out and write something like, ah, on the paper. <laughs> Why can't we cancel the Ellen's? Because maybe we need to combine. Yeah, you can't, you can't do anything if you've got two on one side. So, I'm gonna put these two together. Notice they're being subtracted, division. so they're going to go together as a division. X minus 2 over X plus 1. Now, ln equals ln. What are you allowed to do? If you have a log equal to a log, you're allowed to drop them, and X minus 2 over X plus 1 equals 6. So x minus 2 equals 6x plus 6. 5x equals negative 8. So x equals negative 8 fifths. Extraneous answer. You can get a negative number. It's okay to get a negative number. That's not what makes it extraneous. What makes it extraneous is when I put it back in my problem, this is negative. If that had been a plus two, then I don't have a problem with negative eight fifths here. This is what has to be positive, okay? You can't take the logarithm of a negative number. This has to be positive. So if that had been negative eight fifths plus two, I'd be good to go. Not over here, but I would have been okay, okay here. But the fact is, it's not, and so when I plug it in, I'm going to get a negative. I cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. Well, I would have known if this meant 5x equals 8. Oh. What? Combine those two. Uh -huh. uh, why is it 5x equals negative 8 instead of 5x? I just thought it equals 8. If I subtract x to get the 5x over here, i got to subtract the 6 to get the 8 over here. Right? Well, I thought you were just subtracting the x from the 6x and add the 2 to the 6. And then everything's on that side. <coughs> if you subtract the x and add the 2, then you get a 0 over here. And you have 5x plus 8 over there. Well, you have to move the 8 over to solve it. It's going to be negative. Okay? All right, so that's an extraneous one. All right, now we're going on. Some of this is really little. Four to the three halves. This is no calculator. What does that mean? Your brain sees that, but what does it immediately think? Four the square root, root of four, four to the three cube. Power. Right. So what's the answer? Eight. Eight. Square root of four is two. Cubed is eight. Negative twenty-seven to the two-thirds. Don't panic about that negative. Can you take the cube root of a negative number? Yeah. Yes. What's the cube root of negative 27? Negative 3. Negative 3. Squared? 9. The answer to the question is 9. 10 to the 2 thirds. Uh, that's what? The cube root of 10 squared? So I'd probably write that the cube root of 100. Is that the cube root of 10 squared? Yeah. How about D? That's a really easy one. You can probably do it all in your head. What are we going to have as an answer to D when we start moving things around and canceling them out? X to the fourth on top. X to the fourth on top and Y to the seventh on the bottom. A, B, and C are all exponentials, okay? So remember that you are starting with this as your idea, right? 
That is your exponential. That's your exponential. That's what you're starting with. Now, when I look at, and remember, remember, I'm going to sketch these without plotting points because I remember all my rules. But if you forget your rules, you can set up a T-chart and physically plot points, right? You know that that's generally the shape you're supposed to be getting, right? Now, I'm going to do it from the rules standpoint, so I'm not going to plot points. So I have one half to the X. Now, I need to recognize something here. One half is two to the negative first. So that equation is really two to the negative x. Would you agree? Yeah. So Chandler's given me one of these because he knows if the exponent is negative, if I change the sign on x, what happens? I reflect across the y-axis. So this is a picture, this is a picture of A. That's a picture of A. Now another way to think about it is, if you look at it here, if you are raising a number less than one, if this number is less than one, didn't we talk about that as being a decay situation? So does that show a decay? Yeah, so that's another way to think about it if you want. If you are raising a number less than one, if your base is less than one, you're shrinking. So your exponential is going to be going, well, where's where you're going to be going this way. Okay? All right, now be careful. In the next one, we have 3 to the x and we're making it negative. That one simply flips upside down. This is three to the x, kids. That's this, right there, it's three to the x. But when you put a negative in front of it, you fold it over, so it's going to look like this. And the point that was zero, one is now zero, negative one. So that's a picture of B. Now the next one, everybody knows, this is E to the X. And that's the point zero, 01, that's E to the X. Now what happens when you multiply it by two? What does it do? It stretches it, right? Makes it twice as tall. <clears throat> so it is going to look like this. And what point is that? It's not the point zero, 01. It's been doubled. So now it's the point zero, 02. <coughs> Stretched twice as tall. Now, D and E use our logarithmic curve. So that's ground zero for D and E. Now, tell me what's happened to it in D. Left one. So instead of the asymptote being at zero, the asymptote is now over here at negative one. Instead of the point being one zero, the point is now at the origin. Same curve, one unit to the left. Now let's go back to the original. We're doing now, we're ready for E. This is ln x, right here. That's ln x. What are you doing when you say plus one? You're going to take everything up one. So instead of this point being one zero, 
it's now going to be 1-1. One, one. So you have exactly the same curve picked up one unit. Every point lifted up one unit. For 5D, all right, um, this was 5D right here. So we're looking at this curve right here. I'm on top of six. List the following. Here it is, 5D. Domain. What's your domain? be negative 1, it also can't be anything less than negative 1. So x is greater than negative 1 or negative 1 to infinity. In a logarithmic curve, remember you only have one side of the picture. A range. All real numbers. The range of that guy is all real numbers. It goes down forever and up forever. All real numbers. Would you say it is continuous? Yes. Can you draw that without lifting your pencil? Yeah. I know it's got an asymptote, but there's nothing on this side of it. So I don't have to lift my pencil. Would you say it's increasing or decreasing or some combination of both? Increasing. It is increasing on its entire domain left to right. As you move left to right, your pencil goes up. Does that thing have any symmetry? No. Is it bounded? Yes. Now, when we talk about bounded, we really talk about ceilings and floors. Does this one have a ceiling and a floor? No. no. Does it have a wall on this side? Yeah. yeah, but we don't really call that bounded. Bounded has to do with up and down. Extrema. No, no high points and low points. No hills and valleys. None of those. Asymptotes. Yes. It does. It has an asymptote. This curve has an asymptote at x equals negative one. Negative one. <coughs> now, end behavior, remember, is that whole thing about what's the limit as x approaches infinity, what's the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Keep in mind that the logarithm curve does not have this. It has only one end, right? Yeah. Okay, so what happens, x is approaching infinity, so we're heading this way. What is happening to y? What are these y values doing? They're increasing, so that's infinity. Part seven. Let's finish part seven and then we'll work on eight next time. So part seven. Answer? Two. Why is the answer two? Because 49 is seven squared. The log base seven of seven squared is two. What about B? Five. That's a property. Learn it. That's five. How about C? Four. That's another property. E's and LN's cancel each other out all the time. What about D? Five. Kids, this could not be any easier. Uh-oh, E, log one. Zero. Zero. The log of one, the log any base of one is always zero. Okay, F, the log of a hundred. Two. Why is it two? Because LOG has a base of ten. Log base 10 of 10 squared, 2. All right, now watch it with G. Watch it with G. You have, first of all, you have a radical. We don't do radicals. So can I write that as e to the 7 halves? Because what's a square root? It's a 1 half power. Now, I don't do 1 over, so I'm going to rewrite that as e to the negative 7 halves. So the answer is negative 7 halves. 